Uh, I'm Nancy Boyd Franklin. I'm going to talk about the role of uh, senior black women faculty. I decided it deserved a subtitle. You can have it all, you just can't have it all at once. Please write that down if you're in grad school. Um, I really want to thank Deborah White for this. Um, this has just lifted our spirits and turned us all around. Um, Shalanda and I, um, in our discipline, if you don't have handouts, you don't exist. So the handouts are up here if you want them. Um, uh, there's also, by the way, an interesting bibliography on this stuff. So if you want to take it back and have some ammunition, it's there. Uh, but the first thing I want to talk about is survival for um, senior black faculty. Um, Bev mentioned our favorite book. I uh, started college in 68. Uh, I love Janine's story about the admissions office. I took over an admissions office, too. Um, you know, that was what we did in 1968. Um, that's why a lot of you are in the academy now, trust me. Um, but our favorite book was Bob Guthrie's book, Even the Rat Was White, which was a history. Well, that's another whole story. Um, but. I, I want to talk a little bit um, about um, what Shalanda mentioned. You know, racism is much more subtle today than it was when I was growing up. And can I hear an amen on that? All right. Now, I'm going to tell you what the most learned, brilliant black woman I ever knew, my grandmother, who did not graduate high school, told me. And that is, baby, if you wonder if it's you or if it's racism, wonder first if it's racism. It'll preserve your self-view, all right? Hello. Now, having said, I told you all to wake up. Now, come on. I want to I wanna just tell one or two quick stories I can't resist. I know some of you all know this because you've known me a long time. But I want to... Um, Somebody mentioned in a question to Janine the, um, LaRue, the question about letters. And I just want to tell you my letter story. Um, and that person raised the question of ethics. And I just want to put this out here in a very strong way. In our profession, we have to go through a thing called internship. And I got the routine letters from my uh, faculty at Teachers College at Columbia. And um, I went on internship. And toward the end of my internship, God bless her, a black social worker who was one of my supervisors took me aside and she said, Nancy, I want to read you something. And I don't ever want you to use this person as a reference letter again in your entire life. And she read me, the first sentence of this man's letter for me was, Nancy is quote unquote outrageous. Now, he cleaned it up after that. But I'm sure most of the internships didn't get past that. Some of you know I trained with Sal Mnuchin. He didn't care if I was outrageous, so that was OK. But that kind of negative, racist stuff is what you will experience. Now, I appreciate those who said earlier, those one or two letters. Now, Shalanda knows we're on the admissions committee. I get livid when I read a letter of application for a stellar African-American woman that has one paragraph. All right? We like bulk in the field of psychology. All right? The second story I want to tell you um, has to do with the fact that racism does not go away as you go up the ranks. The food chain is the food chain, all right? Um, some of you know this story too, just bear with me. Um, I teach courses on diversity, and I have, I learned after my first time ever doing it to have my students do journals so I can find out what they're thinking, all right? Oh Lord, be careful what you ask for. <laughs> I, um, I read a journal article. Now, thank God I was home in my home at night and not in front of this child. But I read a journal article by a white male doctoral student. 
And this journal said, um, I'm really surprised to see your son. He thought he was complimenting me. I'm really surprised to see that you're such a good lecturer. When I heard, hello, when I heard you were hired, I thought you were an affirmative action hire. Now, I want to ask you what kind of either insanity or privilege leads somebody to write this to a full professor with tenure who's going to grade your stuff, all right? Now, thankfully, 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 I was home when I read it. Now, some of you know uh, my partner uh, in life is a psychologist who peeled me off the ceiling um, and probably saved that boy's life. But anyway, um, in my field, they call that stuff microaggressions. Now, microaggressions are what happened to your sister friends. Macroaggressions are when it happens to you. So it took me a while to get over that, I must tell you. Um, but I want to talk first about survival for senior black women. Um, it is essential that you stay connected to, and that's why I'm so grateful to Deborah for this conference, that you stay connected to other black women faculty, not just in your discipline, but on your campus and throughout the globe, trust me. Um, you need, for those of you, how many are grad students in the house? Oh, hallelujah, all right. I wish I'd had this when I was a grad student. You have to establish what I call a professional extended family. Let me repeat that, a professional extended family. Some of you know I do research on African American families. This is what I do. Um, and functional African American families, when they move to a new place, they establish a professional and personal extended family. And I learned that from my mama because when I came into this field, I am the first doctor in my family. And there was a point where my parents sat me down. Well, first of all, they didn't believe in psychology, so they made me minor in education so I could get a J-O-B when I got out. I know some of you have been there. Um, but in addition, they were very concerned about the fact that I was entering this whole new field that they knew nothing about, nothing. And so they said, you're going to have to find you some people who are going to watch out for you in this process because we can't advise you, all right? That was the best gift they ever gave me. Um, one thing I want to just remind all of us who are senior in the field, present re regularly at, confer at conferences where you will receive validation for your work. Hello. That may not be the most prestigious conferences in your field. Those are the conferences where people will stand up and cheer when you finish. You need a few of those, all right? I love what everyone said earlier, pick your battles. Um, I thought Janine was wonderful with her example. Survive to fight another day, all right? Um, but I want to talk secondly about the issue of mentoring uh, young black women, um, students and faculty. How many of you all were raised with the notion of giving something back, all right? Um, the notion that if you got this highfalutin education, which was my father's word for it, um, you had not a kind of if you feel like it, but an obligation to give something back. And I just want to talk a little about what that means for our students, our grad students, our junior faculty. Um, one of the things that I have come to believe fully, uh, partly after Shalanda's experience, was a wake-up call for me. Encourage your grad students and junior faculty friends not to take a faculty position until they have completed their dissertations. Can I hear an amen on that? Because the tenure, who knew? The tenure clock starts ticking immediately. All right. Um, one of the things that has been a pleasure in my life is to co-author 
articles with junior faculty colleagues and my grad students. Um, I think that's something in terms of giving something back that you can do. The other thing is, I don't know how it works in all the other different di uh, disciplines, but in psychology, if you want to get a, pa a panel accepted at the American Psychological Association, you have to have a name on it, all right? And so one of the things that um, I have seen junior colleagues do tremendously is invite one of the old school to come be on the panel because it'll get accepted, all right? Be open to that. That's huge in terms of fostering the career of some of our young friends. Um, not to mention things like dinners, lunches. Um, Shalanda is more than a, a member of my professional extended family. She comes to Thanksgiving dinner, Christmas dinner if she can't go home. She comes to family reunions. They're like, oh, she's not related to us? Anyway, um, I love Janine LaRue's notion of electronic mentoring. I mentor young people all across this country, and it's so easy, guys. You know, I mean, it's so easy as women to mentor other women um, with that blessing. Now, I want to talk real quick about two other quick things. One is recruitment strategies, and the other is retention strategies. Um, pay attention to the pipeline in your field, or you're going to be alone for a long time. I love Deborah's um, description of how her department worked on creating a critical mass. At Gazap, we did that years ago. And so we have a critical mass of students of color, all right? That's important not just for their survival, it's important for your survival. When I, um, a colleague of mine at um, University of Utah was getting ready to try to invite a more diverse student body, and he said, what would your recommendations be? I said, don't invite just one. All right, because you don't want to be out there totally alone. Um, definitely, um, around the recruitment issue, we don't just walk in the door, all right? You have to reach out and recruit your sisters in your area and spread the word that there is a faculty opening. Um, I contact colleagues regularly. I recruit, you need to recruit at every conference you go to, even if you don't have an open faculty line, all right? Because there will come a day, all right? Um, don't wait for formal searches. That's been something I've learned over the years. Um, now, one of, the, one of the things I just want to say for us who are senior, we know what the concerns are of young African-American women in the faculty search process. So we've got to do our own recruitment. You know, things like where to get the ethnic food and get your hair done, you know, basic stuff. I'm not kidding. I am very serious about this. Um, the need for a community of color on and off campus. If you have one, share it because it's not so obvious from your office door. Um, a lot of our folk come in with um, dual career issues and partner issues that a lot of universities don't pay a lot of attention to. So we as senior faculty need to say in the search process, this person has a partner and if we want her, we're going to have to make sure the partner has a job too. Sometimes, you know, uh, I forget who said it earlier, but it's so true. Once you are tenured, they can't take it away. Um, so you can speak up. Um, the whole issue of work-family balance, I think, is huge for us as African-American women. We embrace family, all right? But that means not just our children, it means our elders, too. And one of the things, how many of the senior women in the room are now caring for all the elders in the family or have been, all right? It's something that if you haven't hit yet, you will hit. It's down the road. Um, 
communities in which to live. You know, um, that's part of our gift to give, which is where to live and where not to live. Um, our folks come in with concern for their children in the schools. We want schools where our kids will get a fabulous education and where they will not be the only one. Now, I just want to say a quick word about uh, churches um, as a model for spiritual and cultural support. Now, Deborah, Cheryl, and I are members of the same church. And we joke sometimes that our Sunday mornings are very different from our Monday mornings. Even if you are not religious, listen up. If you get hungry and starving for some black people, find a black, I am not lying, find a black church and go visit. It will lift your spirits even if you don't get religion. Trust me. Um, Now, I want to just mention a few things that those of us in senior positions can push our departments to do. I've become, uh, since Shalanda's experience, I've become a real fan of visiting assistant professorships and encouraging our young colleagues to go for postdocs first. Um, it gives them time to get some publications into the pipeline before they have that enormous pressure called first classes, all right? I love the presentation last evening about, you know, multiple first preparations. It's exhausting. Um, now, I want to talk a little bit before I end just about retention issues. Um, you know, folk don't stay if they're not comfortable. And one of the things I love doing, um, not just in my school or my department, but around campus, is letting people know that we are valued elsewhere, P.S. Those of you who are going up for tenure, send out some applications someplace else. So if these people don't act right, you have an alternative. Trust me. Um, now, the support in the tenure process. Uh, and I really want to be very explicit about this because as senior black women, we are in a position to do this. Letters are all important. Let me repeat that. Letters are all important. Use your network. Call out the sisterhood to write letters for this young black woman so that she can be a permanent part of the academy. All right, now, um, it means being willing to write letters for black women that you may not know well, all right? Now, one thing I would recommend to all of you who are going up for tenure, if you're gonna hand our names into your chair, email us and let <laughs> us know you did this, because we get nine million requests for, um, uh, tenure letters, and so you want to make sure that folk are not surprised when your chair calls. Um, you want to reach out beyond your own network. Now, I think Shalanda had a very important point. You need to go to conferences, and more importantly, you need to present at conferences so that you become known. Um, Now, I just want to say a few words about um, senior faculty of color. Um, as I said earlier, productive senior faculty of color are often recruited by other universities. Remind your university of that often. Uh, now, this is a, a radical thought. Send out resumes periodically and seek promotion opportunities, even if you never take them, all right? It reminds you that somebody wants you. Um, I have pushed our, our university to push for, and by the way, if your department doesn't do it, do it yourself. Notify the president, the vice president's office, and everybody else you can think of if you get a, comp or another sister of color gets a competitive offer. All right. 
because too many of us leave and decide nobody cares. They may not, but you should at least try for the competitive offer. Um, I believe that the diversity climate in these universities is essential. I believe it as a woman, as a black woman, as a professor, and as a psychologist. I want us to not only get through the academy, but to thrive, not just survive, but to thrive. Now, many of you know that there are other retention issues. Um, one of the big retention issues is service overload, and a number of our wonderful speakers have talked about that. One aspect of the service overload, though, that is very near and dear to my heart um, is the fact that all of us want to mentor students of color. And what ends up happening is we end up mentoring all of the students of color. Um, one of the things, a uh, very um, uh, there's a whole list of um, uh, references on this. Um, some departments have actually been pushed to allow faculty of color who are mentoring a disproportionate number of students to have a course reduction. Now, that's radical, all right? Now, I just want to underscore the issue of teaching challenges for black faculty. As you heard, uh, in my earlier story, they don't go away when you go up the food chain, all right? But it's very important as senior black faculty members that when we're sitting on tenure committees and somebody drags out that nasty um, comment that a student made about our young faculty member in their first year of teaching, that we remind them that black women, who, particularly those who teach courses on racial, e ethnic, gender, or class issues, face challenges from students, stay with me, many of whom have never addressed these issues in their own lives, all right? Um, and it may result in lower teaching evaluations. Those of us who are senior have got to be willing to raise that standard when it's challenged in somebody's tenure process. Um, Shalanda spoke to the need to, those of you who are researchers in our discipline now, um, one has to have um, not only publications, but grant opportunities. So those of you who already have your NIH or other grants, there are minority supplements and junior supplements that you can give an opportunity to a faculty of color who may not even be at your institution. Now, I, I, I know it's time to end, um, but I wanted, I wouldn't be, the, the psychologist in me would not allow me to step down without talking about our own sanity. Um, I want to just um, remind everybody um, and this is huge. Write it down because if you expect it, you're going to get your heart broken. A prophet is never a prophet in her own kingdom. Can I hear an amen on that? All right? Um, if you thought that was what was going to happen, get a life. All right? Um, don't fight the battle alone. I think that isolation is deadly for black women. We come from a culture that is a collectivistic culture. If we are alone, we will die on the vine. Do not be alone. Even if you have to do it electronically. Who's the sister from Iowa? All right, email somebody and get some <laughs> mentoring. Um, now, this is also interesting. Bring in other senior black faculty from other universities to present on these issues to your faculty, all right? Because you are not a prophet in your own kingdom. Can I hear an amen on that? All right. Um, one of the things, I want to just speak about avoiding burnout. Um, I have treated over the years so many black women from the academy who have been burnt out. And I want to just talk about 
avoiding burnout. Um, first thing on the list, if you think you're doing too much, you probably are. All right, second thing, um, my husband and I have a little thing we do at home. We're both academics. Um, when either of us thinks the other is getting crazy, we put up a sign on the bathroom mirror. It says, just say no, all right? Now, I know this is hard for young folk to believe, but I've got to say to our senior faculty, take your sabbaticals and do not go into the office. Hallelujah, all right? Take care of yourself. I really appreciated um, the young sister who spoke yesterday. Take care of yourself physically, psychologically, and spiritually, all right? I've already talked about not being alone. Stay connected to other black women. Now, we've been talking all two days about sister scholars. I'm going to define sister scholars for you. Sister scholar is the sister you can say to five minutes before you go on to speak, I'm having hot flashes and I hope I can get through this. That's a sister scholar. <laughs> Stay with me. Sister scholar is the person you can call from a Midwestern airport, snowed in, and say, pray for me because I've got my dissertation defense in New York tomorrow morning. That is a sister scholar, all right? When I think about my survival in the academy, the thing that I am most grateful for are my, really my network, my professional extended family, my network of sister scholars who step up time and again, no matter what. Now, I want to just end um, by, I was born in 1950, I came of age in the 60s, and I remember as a teenager saying to my grandma, you know, is, when is racism going to go away? And she said, well, baby, there's good news and there's bad news. <laughs> the bad news is it probably won't go away in your lifetime. The good news is you, spend, you can spend every day of your life taking it apart so that it won't affect your grandbabies in the same way. Now that I'm a grandmother, I know exactly what she means. All right? And the last thing, also her words that I just want to share with you, my, um, when I would get discouraged and I would say, hey, Grandma, it's too hard. She would hug me, hugs are good, and she would say, baby, the hope is in the struggle, all right? As you go back to your universities, please remember, the hope is in the struggle. Thank you.